What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Last Day on Earth Survival. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to play Last Day on Earth on PC, okay? The link will be in the description. What do you want to do is either download LD Player 9 or LD Player 5. Now I'm using LD Player version is 9 and to check that what I just did you click here on the three lines and click on diagnostics information and over here you can see all the specs. You can see my CPU, my memory, my GPU and everything and once you install you will be over here you're gonna have this and then obviously you want to log in into your Google account and you want to go to Play Store and you just type in last year on earth and just download it that's pretty much that's it it's all you gotta do now this is not it what you can do after you install is if you have an iOS phone right let's say you have an iOS phone your account it's iOS, but PC emulators are Android, so iOS cannot play, right? Well, now Kefir has introduced a Kefir Connect, which is this. So what do you want to do? Now go on your iOS phone, sign in with your Gmail, and then basically connect your account to this thing right here. Once you connect your iOS phone into Kefir Connect with that Gmail, now go on LD Player, which is here. You're going to click Connect, and after you connect, you log in with the Gmail that you bound on your iOS account, obviously, and once you bind, you will then be prompted to restore the account and you should be able to get your iOS account on PC on this Android LD player emulator. If you go to settings here, go to model, this doesn't really matter but you can copy this if you want to, put this on 120 FPS. It says ROG Phone 2, here it doesn't really matter other than this. So game settings, now Lazy Earth can be played maximum on 60 FPS. So Put 60 FPS if 240 FPS doesn't work for you. And these are my settings pretty much. Enable vertical sync, I turned that off. Support ASTC texture, that is on. I tick this to disable Windows acceleration, all this stuff. Audio, other things don't really matter. Now, if you go to advanced, here's the very important thing. If you want your resolution and quality to be very crisp and clean, don't skip this. So basically, if you have a 1080p monitor, you put it in 19 by 20 and then you put 1081. You don't put 10, but you put 1081. The reason for that one extra pixel is because it's just bugged. LD player pretty much thinks as the resolution is 1079, just skips one pixel and just stretches it out for no reason. So put it 1920 by 1081 and that should be fine. It will fix your resolution. So now if I go to full screen and if you zoom in literally here on my health bar and take a look, look, everything looks super clean. There's no blurry edges and the UI is super clean. The numbers are super clean. And if you take a look here, on these items you can see nothing is blurry everything is like super clean so another thing you have to do is click here go to settings again and put the dpi put this on 640 640 is the maximum you can have and that is dots per inch this will make the resolution super clean the highest quality quality possible cpu four cores recommended if it says recommended leave it as it is ram if it says recommended leave it as it is on recommended if you put this i mean i think it will be better but i don't think it will be better actually i actually have no clue but feel to test it yourself what works better the recommended setting or the two times higher personally for me i just keep it on four cores so i have never really noticed any difference that is it look how smooth everything is another thing you have to do if you want to play last dinner for not on 30 fps but 60 is you need to turn the 60 fps but how to get this how do you get this option as you can see 30 fps is low-key not smooth it's kind of laggy right what do you want to do is go settings here and hold your mouse over here so now i'm holding my mouse and you click Click hold for like five to six seconds over here where I am and release. Once you release, this will pop up and then you slide that up firm. And as you can see, the game is now in 60 FPS, like so, 64 FPS, top left corner. I don't know why it's higher, but yeah, that's pretty much that. And the keyboard movement, I'm gonna now going to show you how you can set up your keyboard and how to minimize the stupid lag that you get when you open inventory and close inventory, which is like this, and how you can quickly swap weapons like this without any lag. So how do you do this? Okay, let's click here. So make it like this. You want to drag the joystick, which is this, and make it as big as possible and just put it on the center. You have to make it big though. Make it big so the walking is instant. To left to right is instant. If you make this too small, here's what happens. You can see that it's not instantly going left and right. It's not going to an instant to left and right. It's going smoothly which is not what you want. You don't want it to go like this. That's like bad. So what you want to do is you would just make it big 
and leave it like that. And now as you can see, the joystick is instantly going left and right. This is what you want. And this is, I so far, this is the best emulator for this joystick. I, all the other joysticks are like this. Uh, uh, it just walks so slow, you know, like who wants to play an emulator that walks like that, bro? Nobody. Okay, so next up, what you want to do is I'm going to introduce you to LD Player's macro. Now, I don't use macro myself. I do everything by just clicking. I just, I just do it in myself, okay? I don't rely on macros. Macros are bad. It builds bad muscle memory. So just use your mouse. Anyways, how do you do macro? Well, there's this right macro button. So if you want to do something, I'm going to leave you a guide on how to do macro, which is this LD player macro. And the first thing you go into is that okay well, well. um so this is their website ldplayer.net blog introduction to keyboard macro you can copy this or just google this and you will get here like so they here tell you all the commands used for macro so size command this is for like mentioning the screen size of where the macro is going to work so just put in the resolution of your screen let's say you have 19 by 1920 by 1080 so just put in 1920 by 1080 but since we're using 1081, you put 1081. Whatever, basically, whatever resolution you put in here, th that's what size you put in. What do you want to do here? Size is, we already know what size is. Touch is what you want to touch once and release. So you will put the coordinates of where you want to touch on the screen, which is X and Y. And here is the milliseconds of amount to touch it for. Now, personally, I don't mess with that, but I'm going to explain you how it is. So. I have a keybind that opens inventory with Q, so it touches on X and Y 10 milliseconds. Now, if I can put this to like, let's say 10,000 milliseconds, that's going to be what? 10 seconds, right? I I'm bad at math, so don't question me, but let's put this on 5,000. And now when I press inventory, as you can see, five seconds later, it opens the inventory. So if I click here again and do, let's say 1,000, 1,000 milliseconds, that should be one second. Boom. And it opens the inventory after one second. So we obviously want the lowest amount of time. So what are you going to do is just put in. Now you can do this. But personally, I had problems with this. This is like what? One nanosecond or something. Don't do this. Just put in 10 milliseconds. And once you open inventory, as you can see, it instantly opens. Now, why we're using a macro for this is because if you manually click on inventory you can see that there's a delay they have kefir has added fancy ui animations when you click them i guess to make him look more fancy and elegant personally i don't like this so the way to avoid that is by using macros so you automate this you tell this the macro where you want it to touch it touches the inventory slot and how long it touches it it touches it for 10 milliseconds and then releases it once it releases it opens the inventory boom that's it and now to close the inventory it also has a freaking animation which that means there's a delay to close the animation so what do you want to do you do the same thing you put an x it doesn't matter where you put it because you're telling the macro to close the inventory so this can be anywhere but i just like to keep it here and then obviously how you do the macro is you write touch x which is the coordinates and y which is also the coordinates and if you want to for example click it here where my mouse is wherever you hover the mouse is where the coordinates will get updated here, X and Y. So if you hover it on the minimap, it's going to show the coordinates of the minimap. So right now my coordinates are on the X. As you can see, it's 1,878 or 1,873 and then 433. Click save once you're done with setting up your macro. And then once you open your inventory, which is this, opens it, closes it. And as you can see, it's super instant. It's like super fast. It instantly opens and closes it. Now, if I would do this manually, let's say with normal keybinds, let's say G and H to close and open, this is how it would be. You can see it's a little bit slower, and plus it's like inconsistent. You can even see the animation glowing. So last thing is the other keybinds, which is just basically this, suitable for general tap. This is where you put it on your like space bar for looting, and then you put an E for slashing enemies or shooting. Oh, and last thing for the quality, you want to make sure you're playing this game on low minimal is gonna look like what the hell is that ultra is gonna look good but it's gonna look a little bit blurry so let me show you this is on ultra settings this is on ultra settings you can see that it's a little bit blurry like the edges are anti-aliased 
anti-aliased, whatever, however you say it. And the bar is like anti-aliased too, so it's blurry. I call this blurry. Normally on UI it should be clean like this. If you check again, this is on Ultra, right here, and this is on Low, right here. You can see how the edges here, like look at the edges, it's clean. So don't play on Ultra, screw Ultra, play on Low, Low is good. Low is good, right here. High is also bad, because you can see that the edges are anti-aliased, so only low. Low is the best setting. I mean, if, if you want the game to look crispy clean, go for low. If you want it to look good for shadows, I mean, it's gonna look a little bit blurry, And but yeah, I like low. Now for the bike, I just put my arrow keys, which is right here, up, down. Steer to the left, steer to the right. This is the motorcycle settings, and then you will have the controls here. Okay, and the very last thing I forgot to mention, this thing right here, click diagnosis information. If you go to VT, and this is virtualization, virtualization, virt, virt <laughs> bro, virtualization, whatever the hell it's called. If this is disabled, you have to enable it in your BIOS. Now how you enable in your BIOS is you search this in Google, Turn on the computer and then immediately press F10. Basically, just search up how to enable virtualization in your BIOS. Now, virtualization is required for emulators to perform smoother and run faster and better. Once you enable virtualization, it's going to be super, super smooth, butter, clean gameplay. Okay, so that's pretty much that for this video, guys. Hope you learned something new. Please leave a like on this video. It helps my channel. And of course, I appreciate the likes too. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Take care and peace out.